Now, without further ado, I'd like to, uh, again, um, first of all, I'd like to thank my brother-in-law for agreeing to come back on the show. I know he's very busy uh, as an attorney and running for the state legislature. I'm probably interrupting some doorbelling time, but he is, like I say, the constitutional attorney I can rely on. Uh, Steve Oban, thanks so much for, again, making the time. Uh, of course. Yes. Yeah. So I saw this uh, story at uh, our own website here, MyNorthwest.com, and they're quoting this uh, University of Washington professor. Um, I think his name is Stuart Jay. And he says that the, uh, the health care bill won't be changing or eroding any state powers. That mandate that McKenna's talking about won't be eroding or changing any state powers. Quote, there's no commandeering of a state process that even vaguely makes it unconstitutional under the Tenth Amendment. What are your thoughts on that as a constitutional attorney? Well, I, I don't know how you can say that, because as, as you've already read to your audience, the Tenth Amendment uh, doesn't just speak to uh, state, the rights reserved to the states, but also the rights reserved to the people. And the, the basis of this lawsuit filed by uh, Attorney Jim McKenna and 13 other AGs across the country, including, I believe, uh, at least one Democratic uh, AG, is that a, an individual right... Uh, is being interfered with, and that is government is now for the first time going to coerce individuals into entering into contracts with insurance companies um, against their will um, for some you know, national health care purpose. This is unprecedented, and there is no case law that uh, the professor or any other um, expert uh, can appeal to uh, for their position because this is an unprecedented act of uh, the federal government. We're going to be creating case law on this issue uh, for the first time. Yeah, it seems to me, I mean, if you have the freedom to associate and all of a sudden the federal government gets to say, well, in this circumstance, you don't, you must do this. You know, that's uh, that alone is, is an interesting constitutional question, even if you divorce yourself from all the policy. Let me make a, an argument by analogy. And, and again, this is by analogy. Cause right. It deals with a different constitutional provision, but that's the takings clause. That's where government may take one's uh, private property for a public use um, and, in, and then compensate the um, private landowner. The Kilo case, uh, which I know you know about, David, several years ago involved uh, a municipality in New Hampshire taking property uh, from an individual and then giving it to a private developer. Uh, and there was an outrage about that. Instinctively, we know as Americans that we don't, we don't want our government to be taking uh, our property and giving it to a private entity for some ostensible public purpose. And there was an outcry, and states across the country tr protected the individual, individual rights, property rights of their citizens uh, in reaction to that uh, wrong-headed Supreme Court case. That is precisely... Uh, what Attorney General McKenna and the other AGs are doing here. They are seeking to protect the individual interests of, of those who are going to be coerced into entering into a contract with a private entity and paying them their money to that private entity uh, or, or face an IRS penalty. What about the argument from a guy like uh, Jack Balkan? He's a professor at Yale Law School in uh, Connecticut, and he says that Congress has the ability to force people to pay taxes. So if this is a constitutional tax, then that's ball game. But this isn't described as a tax. <laughs> how, many time, how many taxes do you know are paid by, by individuals or businesses, and they go to a private entity? No. <laughs> right. We pay, our, we, we pay the tax so that we can give it, like what, uh, a tax being sent to Walmart, tax being sent to uh, our banks, or what? Yeah, I, we talked about this yesterday, but I think uh, an analogy that really helps to clarify, I think, for uh, listeners is imagine if this was instead a mandate that we had to buy GM cars because the federal government has a controlling interest in GM. Uh, we, would, we would instinctively know that's a violation of our individual right of contract, um, association, and we would hope that our state officials, including our governor, uh, would step in and uh, protect us from that uh, that exertion, uh, that abuse of, of uh, federal power. You know what I find interesting is headlines around the country today are, are similar to that which is in Bloomberg here. Health care suits, quote, unlikely to succeed, scholars say. And all the scholars just happen to say that, that uh, there's nothing to see here when it comes to a constitutional challenge. 
And I'm, I'm betting that if they were to consult, say, I don't know, the Federalist Society or a number of, of uh, lawyers with a more originalist intent approach uh, to things, that uh, they would see things quite differently. Yeah, I read that a former Attorney General Edward Meese um, has opined on this already, and he certainly think, thinks there's a direct comp- constitutional issue here that needs to be resolved by the courts. So you're right. It's, whoever you, it's whatever authority you want to call. Um, you're going to probably get a different uh, opinion. But there's just no question here that this is an unprecedented, unprecedented exertion of federal power that needs to be tested in the courts. And so it, it's just not possible to say it's frivolous because there's simply no case law that anyone can rely upon to say that this would somehow be a frivolous claim. Hey, Steve, did I interrupt your doorbelling today? <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good luck to you out there. And if anybody out there in, uh, in uh, what, the uh, Tacoma, Stellicum, um, what is it, 28th District? Steve? Yeah, that's right, Lakewood. Lakewood, you guys, if uh, Steve knocks on the door, you make sure you tell him hi for me. So, <laughs> Thanks, David. Hey, you bet. Thanks, Steve. It's uh, 420 here on the David Bo Show. Don't forget, by the way, Steve's website, steveoban.com, steveoban.com. We need some more constitutionally minded folks in the state legislature. So go there. There's even a little place you could, you know, like add support to folks like this. Odds are... We could use it, people. What do we got right now? We got a bunch of Democrats in the legislature that are out there. In fact, I know the answer to this um, because uh, I asked Steve yesterday off air, you know, uh, what, what about you? If you were elected to the legislature, would you, uh, would you vote to take away money from Attorney General McKenna for this lawsuit? Of course, the answer was no, 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 because this is an angle worth pursuing. So uh, cheers to my brother-in-law. Uh, SteveOban.com.